Good morning, everybody, or after, hello. How's that, all right? Hope everyone's having a good Tuesday. <laughs> hey, I'm Edward uh, Euler. happy to be joined by, well, y'all. Uh, recently got Clash of Cultures uh, here at HCHQ, the Monumental Edition. And I know there, uh, there's a lot of Civ fans out there, uh, me being one of them. And I haven't played Clash of Cultures in forever, and we were talking about doing it as a stream before COVID hit, then COVID hit. And then, oh, hey, the Monumental Edition showed up, which apparently includes the extremely hard to get Civilizations expansion, uh, some revisions and some other stuff. And so I thought, you know what? Uh, some things played out to where we had some, some time today and thought I would bust out a unboxing. So we got a couple of things from WizKids, uh, super skill pinball, ramp it up. So thought we maybe would unbox that, uh, real quick first, or maybe at the end, whichever y'all want. Uh, and Clash of Cultures, monumental edition. It's a big box. It's not a giant box, but it's, it's a pretty big box. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I'm excited to play this one. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Civilization games through the ages, one of my all-time favorite games. I've always liked Sid Meier's Civ. I think it's the third edition that was my favorite. I haven't played the new, latest, fourth edition of Civilization, whichever that is. Uh, but yeah, Clash of Cultures, uh, a lot of people say that's their favorite Civilization game. So yeah, let's, let's check it out, shall we? All right. Welcome. All right, so there it is. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty pretty good size box. It's pretty sizable, um, and I figure we'll we'll bust this out afterwards for those that want to hang out. Uh, the new boards and everything for uh, Super Skill Pinball. But the reason y'all are here, Clash of Cultures. So, I mean, it's and it's weighty and oh, 350. All right, plastic dolls. 350 plastic dolls. All right. So if that's your thing, whatever. Take it or leave it. I mean, sure. But uh, yeah, let's let's go and play around with the Zoom, shall we? What do we got here? Okay, a lot of stuff. So Civilization Expansion, the Aztec Pack contents. Uh, basically, from what I gather, uh, Civilization, the expansion for this was a necessary thing. It's something that everybody wanted to play with. Uh, it makes the uh, civilizations asymmetric, which that's always a good thing. And Clash of Cultures, at this point, is an older game. I mean, it was uh, it came out in 2012, and the expansion 2013, 2014, I think, about the time I got into the hobby. So yeah, there we go. Um, so okay, it's Civ Six. Well, no, no, not the video game. I'm talking about the board game version, right? So okay, y'all are gonna make me do this. Hold on. All right, hold on. Yeah, I know there's Civ 6. Last one I played was Civ 5, but hold on. So, Civilization, BGG. Let's go there. Sid Meier Civ. Okay, so there is, how many versions of this game are there? Uh, there's one, two... Then the expansion, three. There's like, yeah, there's four versions of it. So I'm right, okay, yeah. So it's the third one, Sid Meier's Civilization, the board game. The one that came out in 2010 is the best civilization. Again, I haven't, I haven't played the newest one, so I don't wanna be out of line and speak to that. But anyway, back to what we're here to do. So there you go, okay? So let's uh, bust out the, uh, get everything. Oh, that is a that is a heavy box. That legit, all right. Bring that back a little. There we go. All right, so it's coming. Take my word for it. I appreciate that, Fernando. Says he loves my, uh, your heavy, uh, yeah, love your unboxings. You take your time, zoom in on things, excited for this. Yeah, me too, because I want to see what's in the damn box. 
And by the way, no one mentioned, but Sidereal Confluence, the new version from WizKids is also, that's behind me. Um, I would like to get that stream sometime as well. Uh, the two hour unboxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. So, all right, anyway, uh, so rule book, we'll come back to that. We'll, we'll take a look at what all's in here. Hey, good news, there is a baggie. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's one baggie. Before I admit it, that's funny, right? That's not just me that finds that like, do or do not, but one baggie. So I'm guessing there's storage system in here then, right? I mean, well, damn, we couldn't fit that one thing. So we, come on. I can't be the only one, right? So by the way, here on the, uh, on the Geek and Sun uh, uh, table, I have a bunch of little compartments that I keep like baggies in and have, you know, these all, I I'm sure I'm not the only one that has these stashed away, right? That has baggies everywhere. But yeah, that's, I mean, one. Wanna make sure that we highlight that, okay? And it, it is a big, I, I don't know that I've seen the shape. So that is what, one, two, what, four by eight? So anyway, all right. Uh, so the punch boards look pretty good. That, that, to me, that, that's a good thing that it falls out like that. Uh, the, the thickness on the player boards looks pretty good. Um, the, the, the little, you know, where your cubes go. They're not multi-layer, but they, they do have a spot where your, where your uh, technology cube will go for tracking all of that. So, so as you can see, that's, so that works, right? This is, uh, this, this idea was pre um, multi-layer boards, I guess, back in 2012, right? So, but that looks good. So there you go, give you an idea on that, all right? And so, Aztecs, Japan, Rome, Carthage, Greece, Mayan, which recently listened to a podcast called A Short History Of, and the most recent was uh, about the Mayans. I'll be honest, I did not know this, that the Mayans are a existing civilization, like they still exist. I thought the Mayans were an extinct civilization. But... Apparently not. Anyway, so yeah, the player boards keep popping out. That is a good thing, I think. We have Egypt, the Vikings, and China. So, not Egyptians, but Egypt. And anyway, you get, anyway, might as well keep it consistent. There we go. Uh, we have Persia, India, the Celts. All right. Uh, wow, look at those player aids. Okay, hey, you know what? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the player aids. Eventually, there we go. Those are pretty detailed. I like that. That's actually really, really nice. And... Interesting that they're on punch boards and not uh, like cards or whatever, but those are pretty sizable. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Oh, and the Phoenicians here, uh, or, oh, those are, oh God, I gotta remember what these are because it's been forever since I've played. But uh, Phoenicia, Babylonia, more player aids. Again, they just pop out. So that, and, as I mentioned, the thickness on these, pretty good. So, I mean, they're, they're really not going to bend unless you really try to, which let's not. But, yeah, I mean, that's solid. Pretty happy with that. All right. <coughs> uh, and then um, the board are made up of not, well, you know, multi-hexes, whatever. You get the idea. Again, these are the same thickness as all the other punch boards, which those are maybe two millimeter. I mean, they're, they're solid. They're, they're solid. So yay on that. The artwork looks nice on them. Looks clear to be able to distinguish 
uh, what terrain is what. Again, they punch easily, so that's good. Still going. Yo, dog, I hear you like terrain. All right, the Huns. I appreciate that the first player marker is an elephant. Yes. Uh, the round track. Oh, and yep, I was right, by the way. There is a storage device down there. Uh, do these melt? Does anybody... Bad joke, I know, come on. The original edition, for those that didn't know, had yellow pieces that melted for... I'm not sure why, but, uh, but yeah. Um, all right, so we'll bust these out here in a minute. Okay, so hence why there is one rule, one bag to rule them all. All right, uh, and then that appears to be the end of it. It is, all right, solid. Uh, where do we want to start? We want to start with the uh, rule book or the uh, plastic dolls or the cards. Y'all decide, okay? I'm gonna get a drink of some uh, orange Pico this morning. How many of y'all have played Clash of Cultures, by the way? Um, curious. I have not played it in whew, probably six, seven years, maybe, I think. Uh, but super excited to, to go ahead and uh, bust it out. The plastic bits here, those are solid. They're plastic. Um, But you can hear that, I think. But yeah, solid. I like that. I like those a lot. I like the kind of the the or the um, pastel color on these. So these are going to be the player colors. Uh, I don't think I need to show all of these in detail. All right. All right. Rule book. It looks like. All right. So we'll stop there. Pause. Let's bust out a rule book. It has been requested. What's up, Banker Dave? How you doing? Yep, probably ought to use the right remote for that. That'd be good. There we go. Okay. Um, you know what? Better yet, let's do this. There we go. The angle on that would be a little bit better. How's that? There we go. All right. So, uh, I didn't bring glasses for this. Uh, lead your culture from a single settlement to a sprawling empire. Discover your surroundings, build an ancient metropolis, research technological and social advances, and conquer anyone who opposes you. The winner creates a culture remembered for eternity. Yep, there you go. Originally released in 2012. Two years later, the much acclaimed Civilization expansion was released. And now the Monumental Edition contains an updated and improved version of both the base game and the expansion. All right, for ease of learning, the expansion has the rules for the expansion content clearly marked, which it should, good. This allows you to learn and play the base game and then add the civs, uh, Civilization expansion when you want. The expansion adds more cards, more units, more building, so more. It adds more and asymmetric, like I mentioned. And most importantly, it lets each player play as one of the 15 historic civilizations. All right. Uh, that icon, as you see right there, uh, is on all the civilization expansion components. It can also be found on the shared game components, such as the player board, to show if an element is only relevant when playing with the expansion. Well, that's awesome. Okay, that's well laid out. I dig that. Cool. Uh, player aid is double sided with one side for the base game, the other with the expansion. Oh, let uh, a moment while we go back and look at that. Grab. Okay, so there is this apparently is the base one or the base one and the expansion one. I'm looking for that icon. But I do like that it's very clearly laid out. I'm trying to see, do y'all see where it says specific? Oh, these, right here, these icons right there have it. And they are not there on that side. Well done, all right, excellent. Pretty, pretty fan, uh, pretty, pretty big fan of that, okay, okay. 
I don't know about y'all, but to me, this is such an important page and I'm so glad when companies do this. It shows you the back and the front of the card. Great, so when I'm grabbing cards, I know what the deck is I'm looking at. Okay, obviously this one, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory on these, I get that, but a lot of times that's not the case. So having a picture on the front and back, kudos on that. It shows pictures of everything along with the label. That, yes, just so much yes. Thank you for this, big fan. And then begin setup. Pictures, words, excellent. And it shows where the, uh, the expansion stuff is all of those. So not only that symbol, but also clearly defined with a different color. Same goes with over here, which matches the color there. Hey, attention to detail. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, such a big deal and really, really good. We're off to a good start here. I will say continues with the, uh, with the setup. All right. And then here we go. Um, Another little small nitpick that I like that they did. Basically, it's an overview. What the hell are we trying to do in the game? This is how I teach y'all whenever I, I do teaching, right? Okay, lay out what it is you're looking at. Okay, great. And before we talk about anything, give me an overview on what it is we're trying to do. Okay, this is what we're trying, the goals. All right, got it. Give me a clue, good, and now let's roll into it. It's such a simple thing, but really, really well done. Yay, that makes me happy. All right, some key concepts, cool. I can take that stuff or leave it, but if sometimes it's not easy to, if for when laying out a, a rule book, where to include this stuff, so putting this up here at the front end, I'm fine with that, that's good. All right, and then how to play here the various actions. Okay. Again, keeping consistent with the uh, expansion stuff. So yay. So this is this is pretty interesting, a little rule summary that you don't see for, was that with all of them? Yeah, so basically, wow. I'm really, really impressed with that. So, hey, here is everything for advance and then a, a brief summary. So this will help, but you know how in uh, Alea games, like in the original Castles of Burgundy, their rule books, you have the main rules over here, then you have a little, uh, hey, here's a synopsis of what it says. This is basically doing the same. I like the way this is laid out a lot. So hey, here's movement. Okay, how to explain it. I am a huge fan of this. Really, really w w well laid out here. Glad to see heavy cardboards well represented in the rule book as well. Glad to see all the examples. Yeah, this is... Now, obviously, I haven't read it yet. I haven't gone through it. But just on a surface, this is a fantabulous rule book here. Only, only geeks like us can get excited about the layout and everything on a rule book. Am I right? Like, I'm not alone here, am I? Like, I appreciate this. A lot. All right, and then there are the various, uh, the variants as far as uh, the variable end game. Because I know that the, the whole die roll ending seemed to be the most popular in the original and everything. Um... So yeah, I appreciate that they carried forward the variants here. Yeah, really, really well done. Really, really pleased with this. Excellent. So uh, let's see. Usually they give credit somewhere in here. Let's let's give credit to who this was. Here we go. Um, 
Let's look together, shall we? Let's find this. Wow. Well done, Grogan. And the gaming rules tape. This is really well laid out. I mean, really well laid out. So good job. Really, really well. Good job. So loving how this looks. All right. So there's that. Now, uh, plastic dolls. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. All right, so this was the top one, uh, the top of the two uh, minis. Where, don't freak out, don't worry, it's taped. Oh, I should have had a razor blade. I did not, I apologize. There we go. Get over into your own side. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I'll i zoom in on these, but I don't know exactly what it is y'all wanna see, but uh, we'll do some buildings in the various colors, some units and such. We clearly must do some heffalumps there and some ships. All right. If there's anything uh, specific you all want to see, that does not like laying on its side. It will not. All right. Hey, there are, uh, you know, those boats that, that automatically like the RC boats that you can't capsize. This apparently has uh, taken that to an extreme there. All right. I guess we're gonna start with the purple ones. Pretty well detailed. I have no idea, are these 28? No, I think they're, they're smaller than 28 millimeter for the minis, I don't know. I don't know if these are, you know, paint worthy or not. Y'all will have to, uh, All right, and then the ports. You can even see the detail. Here, let me grab, there you go. The detail on the bricks, on the, on the, uh, on the piers, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, this would be actually easier with the forceps. Oops, stop that, there we go. Yeah, these, these look really good. The non-capsizing ship. Yep, get your hand out of there. There we go. Yeah, it, seriously, it will it will self-write every time. Looks like a beast, pun intended. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can even see some of the detail up here with the, uh, the guys riding said elephant. That's pretty good. I think they look pretty good. I mean, again, I am hardly the arbiter of what is a good or not good plastic mini, but considering the quantity of these, these seem really good, right? I mean, you see the individual bricks on those? I think folks would be pretty happy with this. So yeah, these look really good. All right. Uh, I think, honestly, I think the blue ones are the most, you can, the blue pops the most to me out of all of these.
these are these are pretty good quality, I think. And they're solid. Like they're they're not super heavy, but they they feel like the weight they should be. They're not uh, extraordinarily light or anything along those lines. Uh, they feel like the weight that they should be. Yeah, I like the blue ones out of all of them the most. I would say the blue are my favorite. Yeah, these look pretty good. Okay, 15 millimeter. Okay. And that that would feel about right. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's everything that is in that container of it. And then uh, we have cavalry and we got some more on the other. So let me, uh, is there, oh, there's a, uh, there's a lighthouse. Let's, hold on. I mean, who, who doesn't love lighthouses, right? Is that a lighthouse? Or is that a, uh, like a, um, uh, like a planetarium type, telescope type building? I can't think of the right word. Really looks good. Yeah. Looks fantastic. All right, anyway, so let's get these back into their right spots. So that explains the one bag to rule them all, probably for all the, uh, all the little punch stuff. So, okay, cool. You gotta admit though, that was awfully funny. All right, so there's that and then there's this one. Uh, so we have the cavalry here. We have uh, more the the like monuments. We've already gone through those. We'll check out the dice and deck o cards. So how many of y'all have played Clash of Cultures, or have played Civ, or have not for that matter, right? Uh, let's, let's go with the, uh, the cavalry. Oops. There we go. All right. So we may need a little bit of hot water if need be, or will that straighten out on its own? Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty close. Maybe a little hot water, soak it in there to bend it back. But even so... The, uh, all the cavalry look pretty good. Their spears are pretty thin, so you can see that it definitely has a little bit of bowing, but you can fix that, like I said, just put it in some hot water, uh, and then uh, it'll, it'll, you'll be able to bend it back into place. But to show the different colors, how the cavalry look, these look really good. Oh, hey, Daniel, uh, says, glad you like the rule book layout. Uh, we worked so long on it. Well, um, like I said, from a cursory glance, it looks fantastic. I think you all did an excellent, excellent job with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, what other color am I missing? Let's see. And gray, they're hooked. Let go. Hold on, we got, there we go. There you go. Okay, so that one definitely is going to need to, uh, he has, uh, he needs some um, spear, so SD pills for his spear. Maybe that looks rough. That yeah, but like I said, hot water that'll take care of it. So that is the cavalry, and then I really want. I'm looking forward to seeing these uh, the uh, monuments. Also possible. I, that's a good point. All right. So the monuments are kind of a like uh, bronze, goldish color. Got the Colossus of Rhodes, Hanging Gardens of Babylon. We got the pyramids. Yeah, these. I mean, they're the they're the. Good lord! I cannot hit the right button today. It seems. There we go. All right, so those look really good again here. Let's 
keep my. Yeah, these look good. Parthenon. These really look good. Oh, that was a bow? Okay, all right, fair enough, my bad. <laughs> the Lighthouse at Alexandria. I love that you can see the individual bricks down on the, on the bottom there. These really look fantastic. Yeah, they really, these, I don't know what these are. They're clearly not 3D printed, um, but these really look fantastic. And we can bring it in a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, that's bothering me a moment. There we go. Yeah, well done. Colossus of Rhodes. Uh, oh, it's the Great Wall of China. I couldn't figure out what this one was. Yeah, these really look good. And y'all know me, I could take or leave minis, um, but these, I, uh, yeah, I, um, uh, what, is, this is the, it's the, it's a tomb, and I can't think of the name of this one. Uh, that looks really good, and finally, obviously, Great Pyramid. This one's kind of hollowish, but even, I, I, yeah, it looks great. So really, really well done. Oh, okay. I get it, Fernando. Yeah, this, very, very nice. All right, uh, I'll take a gander real quick at the dice. These, there we go. So the original, I'm thinking, did that have the six-sided dice, I think, right? And then uh, the expansion brought out these, I think so. I might be misspeaking on that. Uh, Icons are pretty clear on those as well. And I appreciate that they use kind of like the white marble type look to them, but it doesn't distract from the, uh, from the faces of the dice. So that's good. All right, nice. And uh, yeah, they, they have the normal like weight that you would expect from a regular die. When you have all of them in your hand, it's got some good weight to it. All right, then start with the leaders. So Daniel says, we fell in love with the gold wash on the wonders, it brought out a lot of the details. Boy, are they. Um, and just to be clear, like I, I wouldn't say that the minis are heavy by any stretch, but they feel they feel like the appropriate weight. Like, I mean, it's, 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 you, you can tell they're not metal. Um, they're definitely uh, plastic, but they, they have the weight that you would expect them to have. All right. Struggling to open the packages as you always do, even when they're easy open. There we go. All right. Bring that out a little bit. Might be a little extreme now that we're off the minis. All right, uh, no linen finish on the cards, but they're fine. They're they're a little a little thin, um, but I don't think they're going to be a problem at all. Um, 
And the fact that they have colored borders, if you're a sleever, might be something that you uh, think about doing. But I don't think it's going to be a massive issue one way or the other. Just take a look at some of the artwork. Rome's favorite man. Versus Jetterix. I like the uh, distribution of... Uh, I imagine he's probably good at war, at combat. Uh, between men and women, that's good. Alex gets all the love. What about his dad? Philip was, like, nothing that Alex did could have happened without his bad mofo of a dad, Philip. Just saying. And I like that they're not all the, the like, the, the, you get the, the ones that you would expect, but you also get some others that maybe you, it makes you interested to go back into his, uh, and read about some of them. I love that. This is, I, I have not heard of some of these. Nice. All right. Yeah, very, very cool. Liking those. Uh, take a look. So uh, Daniel says, credit to Gong Studios for the leader art. All right. By the way, um, there is there is one side of these that is easier to open. The one that has that, you just grab it and oh, in theory. There we go. All right, cool. You know what? While we're here, give me a second and I'll bust out all of these for y'all. Oh, oh, going back to the dice, I missed this. Daniel says, uh, the faces on the D12s are pretty small. Okay, this one doesn't have that side. Uh, the faces on the D12 are pretty small, so we wanted marbling for the ancient look, but not so high contrast that it made the icons hard to read, which I appreciate uh, for exactly, I mean, um, readability, right? And, and function has got to trump everything else, so glad to hear that. All right, have a good one, Daniel. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping in. It was a really, really diverse and cool lineup of uh, leaders. So there a lot of names that I don't recognize, which, yay, something else to uh, investigate. I, I will say, if I have a critique so far, it would be the thickness of the cards, but that's really it. Um, and they're not a problem. Um, just, I probably wouldn't bridge shuffle these uh, for to, to put in context, whereas in a lot of games, I would have no problem doing that. These are a little thin to be able to maybe do that. So FYI on that stuff, all right? So the events, or some of, and then there we go, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm not going to go through these like I did on the others, uh, but gives you an idea. A fine year. Everything looks laid out well, looks clear. Too soon. All right, so those are the events. Now we'll go to the actions, then we'll finish up with the wonders. So, yep. All right, 
And then finally, oh, no, there are more. Sorry, there's two different types here, right, objective cards. So we'll go with the objectives. Oops. Yeah, these are laid out well. They look very clear. Okay. So that would be, uh, okay, the, uh, the Colosseum in, Ro in Rome, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Great Li uh, Library of Alexandria, uh, the Lighthouse, I can't remember, uh, yeah, the mausoleum, uh, that's uh, Taj Mahal, right? Is that? No, that's, no. Is that? No. Mm. Colossus of Rhodes, Great Wall of China. Okay, all right, those look good. Um, so, now, when you have all the decks laid out, obviously on the back side you can clearly see what's what, and then on the front side, all right, here, we'll do it this way. So no matter where you are at, uh, at the table, you're gonna be able to tell what's what. Production looks fantastic, really, really happy. And like I said, the only critique if I have one is the cards are a little bit thinner, than, but they're, they're not a problem, mind you. But again, just trying to be heh, objective about it. Um, yeah, so there you go. So that's Clash of Cultures, monumental uh, edition. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big box. Again, context the size, there you go. Here are some free advertising, there you go. Uh, it's about the size of Mage Knight, I think. About the same size box. Um, but yeah, it looks great. Pretty uh, Alexandria. The Mausoleum at Helicron. I, I am, I'm getting everything confused. Anyway, all right, um, there we go. So, do y'all wanna also see Pinball Arcade? Um, I imagine, why not see the new cards? We're, that we're probably going to do a uh, play with us, um, if any of those are available for print and play, for y'all to play along, like what we had did, what we had did, really? What we had done uh, for the original one. So, give me a minute to clean this up a little bit so those can go there that's fine and we'll put the cards ah. yeah I'm stoked to play this I am as you all know huge fan of Civ games so we'll see how, uh, uh, that probably wasn't supposed to go there. Okay, mistakes were made. There we go, saved it. We're good, there. And then, and nice thing about this is this one that has the cover on it uh, will lay flat with that so things in theory should not move around too much. Uh, should should be able to, but the only thing is, when you have everything else in, it definitely will keep the lid on. Get all of that. There we go. And then obviously the punch boards will get tossed, unless you're some of those weird people that keep the punch boards. And yes, I, I, think, I think calling you a weird person for keeping punch boards, or instead of recycling them, Hey, you do you, all right? All right, super skill pump, uh, pinball, ramp it up. I do not know what the new boards do. Uh, in ramp it up, you'll play one of four different all new tables, each with its own challenges and bonuses. Okay. Jeff Engelstein uh, designed the original. I assume he also uh, did the new boards as well. I'm looking. 
by the way. Everybody and their mother apparently likes the game, is basically what they're saying here. Uh, my favorite Civ as of now, I, I haven't played enough of it to be able to say uh, for Clash of Cultures. Um, I mean, I, I've always been a huge fan of Rome in general. Um, so, just Roman history. Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, Lighthouse in Alexandria. All right, thank you. There we go. All right, so let's check it out. Let's bring it in a little bit tighter. Smaller game. Uh, looks like uh, this is the same size as the original. Um, yeah, pretty thin, as you can see, obviously. Right? Okay. What are y'all's favorite sieves? Whenever you play a sieve game, do you have a favorite or specific in Clash of Cultures? Do you have a favorite? All right, this is not going to be nearly as in-depth, uh, but the rule book ha lays out the different boards. I kept reading this as golfer, golfer, really? <laughs> Gopher, my bad. Quick start guide. Advertising. Yeah, there we go. Uh, pens, you have some translucent dice. Those are pretty cool looking. The, I haven't seen these. Pink with the blue pips. I like those. Then you have the... Uh, the little half ball metal piece, or they're plastic, but they look like the half metal, which represents the balls. The four pens, okay, cool. Get all that out of the way, let's check out the boards. Ay vey. Oh, okay, Go For Gold is available as a print and play. So it sounds like that's the one we would do uh, for the stream. All right, probably next week, my, maybe the week after, I'm not sure, um, but sooner rather than later, okay? Okay, so you have the, the backboards, right? You have the, you know, that would normally sit up like this way when you're playing, right? Um, so it would sit like this if you were playing pinball, you get the idea, but. Have that. So there's those. And on the flip side are the other, but we'll, we'll get there. But there are so there are four of each board. Okay. And then so that here. We'll do it like this. And that's probably going to be too tight. Yeah, let's. So, just uh, give you an idea. And then on the other side, you have top speed. This would be fun to come up with different uh, different boards like this, I would think. And then you have high roller heist. And on the other side, you have pin pals. Dude is ripped. That is a that dude has been out in the fields a lot. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that's it. There you go. So cool. I'm I'm looking forward to busting that out. We had a lot of fun with that. That was a lot of fun. And it was cool that uh, Jeff Engelstein joined us for one of those. You can always go back and play the original as well. 
Uh, obviously, it's on the honor system, but uh, you can have fun with uh, how we did it then. You can do the original again. Um, yeah, very cool. Let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so Go For Gold is apparently available, like I said, as a print and play, so that's the one we will do when we, uh, when we do a play along with us. Vaughn says, Edward, just want to thank you, Dark Ages. Okay, good. I'm glad. Cheers. All right. That's it. That's the unboxings for today. Uh, by the way, if you're a patron over in Slack, I think there was a little bit of confusion. Uh, today at 3 p.m., so in three hours, Derek and I are going to uh, uh, bust out some games of Hanamakoji. Uh, it's a very clever, I think, two-player only little card game that came out uh, 2017, 2019, somewhere in that neighborhood from uh, Emperor 4S, Emperor S4. And we just busted it out this weekend, really enjoyed it, and then also got the seven mini expansions with it. And they're doing a Kickstarter for Gisha's Road, which I'll show you, but we're probably not gonna play that one today. We may play it later on. Uh, the Kickstarter's coming up, I guess, sometime in November. Uh, for that and really enjoyed our plays of Hanamakoji and so we're going to do that today at 3 p.m. Then tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern we're going to uh, do our best teaching y'all how to play Race for the Galaxy. So I'm playing with some folks that have thousands of plays under their belt. I probably have a dozen. Don't bet on me but should be a good time nonetheless. So we're gonna play just the base game of Race, and then we're gonna continue doing playthroughs of Race for the Galaxy with the various expansions to show how those integrate into the base game as well. So that's what y'all can expect today at 3 p.m. and then tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, respectively. All right, so there you go. Thanks everybody. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, certainly appreciate it. Consider supporting the show, patreon.com forward slash HCHQ, certainly would appreciate that, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Well, have a great next three hours, and I will see you all in three hours with Derek. All right? Take care, y'all. Thanks. And uh, can't wait to play Clash of Cultures. Looking forward to that one. So, thanks, y'all. Bye. Really look good. That rule book. Well done.